Now, it's clear that the folding smartphone is here to stay. The only question is, what's it going to look like? You know, even if we narrow things down to just the, the kinds of the infolding displays, there are already two distinct flavors. You've got devices like the Galaxy Z Flip, which is like a regular smartphone that can fold in half. And then you've also got devices like the Galaxy Z Fold, which is like a, I guess, regular smartphone that can then unfold into a much bigger device. I've always been a fan of the former because, well, I like small form factor smartphones. Um, but my problem with the Galaxy Z Flip is that, you know, if you want to do anything meaningful on it, you always have to flip open the phone. And that can be a pain in the butt sometimes. Today though, I may have found a third option. This is the Oppo Find N, and it's the company's first public stab at making a folding smartphone. They say that internally they've developed like, you know, six different generations of folding devices before they finally settled on this. And they were like, just, okay, this one is good. Uh, they, according to them, the main goal that they wanted to achieve was to have a folding smartphone with a cover screen that is usable, you know, not some kind of weird aspect ratio or really small or, you know, something that you can't really do anything with it. So it had to be like a proper aspect ratio so that you don't get any weird sort of glitches with the, um, you know, normal apps. But then the phone should also be able to open up to have like a bigger, more immersive screen. And the result of that, I mean, I think they've done a pretty good job because the Oppo Find N's size is incredible. For the cover screen, you get a 5.49 inch display that has a pretty regular aspect ratio of 18 by 9. So that means you won't run into any, you know, compatibility issues with existing apps. You can just use them like normal without, you know, being worried about like stretching stuff and, and things looking really weird. Physically, that makes the phone pretty much the same size as a uh, iPhone 13 mini. Uh, this one, this one right here, <laughs> which means obviously I really like the form factor. It fits really nicely in your hand, you know, it's got curved uh, edges all around so it's really comfortable and it's definitely usable with one hand, no problem. But then when you want a more immersive viewing experience, you can then unfold the phone and you'll be greeted by a 7.1 inch display with an aspect ratio of 8.4 by 9. Now, Oppo says that, you know, it's supposed to be a landscape ratio, um, but honestly, just look at it. It's, it's way closer to a square than anything super cinematic. Still, you know, I have to commend them because I really like the way these displays look. I mean, just look at them, you know, the displays go all the way to the edge and it really feels like a no compromise screen, you know. It, it, in fact, if you look at the bezels, they look pretty much the same as my iPhone 13 mini. Uh, the only difference is that it has a tiny punch hole uh, in either the center or the corner of the screen uh, for your selfie camera. Another issue that Oppo wanted to tackle with their folding smartphone was the ever-present crease. So if you're familiar with folding devices like, you know, the Z Fold, Z Flip, and even stuff like the Motorola Razr, there is a very noticeable crease, especially on the Samsung devices where it's just one hard line down the middle. So Oppo was like, no, we don't want to do that. You know, we don't want to just like fold the phone and then hope it doesn't and then like we get that really hard crease. No, they, they wanted to do things their way. So what they did was they came up with what they call a flexion hinge. And what this means is that instead of folding the phone like as much as it would go and then sort of leaving like a, like a smartphone tie gap in the middle and just hoping for the best like Samsung does, they're actually pulling the display in. So they're like tucking part of the display into the hinge so that there isn't that hard edge line. It reminds me a lot of how Motorola did it with the Moto Razr and Oppo says that with their new Flexion hinge, they've managed to you know, cut down the visibility of the crease by 80%. And you know what? I believe them. Looking at it in person, there is no like hard line crease the way you find with the Z-blings. <laughs> or, you know, any bumps or lumps that are very big or noticeable the way you would find on like the original Mate X or the Moto Razr. Instead, you get like three hardly noticeable um, imperfections along the center of the screen to tell you, yeah, there is still a hinge there and this phone still folds. But honestly, when I was using it, they immediately disappeared. <laughs> so I have to say, super impressed. 
definitely the least noticeable um, solution that I've seen so far. That being said though, although you know cutting down the crease and, and, and the visibility of the crease is like a, a really cool thing that they've done, my favorite thing about this Flexion hinge is that with the Oppo Find N, it actually closes flat. So it's completely flush. There is no stupid smartphone thigh gap. And <sighs> thank you. Thank you. When I saw how they were going to tuck the screen into the hinge the way you know uh, Motorola does with the Razer, I was a little bit worried because when I used the Razer, the first thing that I that I noticed was that the screen was really soft and it was like sort of like flapping around and and there was a lot of free play and movement with the display and I did not like that at all. The good news is that on the Oppo Find N, I didn't really notice any of these issues. Um, they are still using UTG, which is ultra thin glass, very similar to what Samsung does with their modern uh, Z Flip 3 and Z Fold 3s. So you still get that really nice glass texture. Oppo also says that, you know, the whole display glass array is like made up of like 12 different layers and it's done so that it's um, improved the durability of the device. But you know, they, 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 they only say that um, it will have to come down to practical use to really see how this works. But the upside is that since it closes flat, you know, completely flush, the odds of dust and stuff getting into the the inside of the phone is much lower so I guess maybe you won't get as many scratches like that. The rest of the Find N is also you know in typical high-end Oppo flagship smartphone fashion really well built. It has that same kind of like you know organic kind of look with the back design where the camera bump sort of like it, it flows upwards and I really like the way that looks. Uh, I particularly like the black colorway because the texture on that is like it's weird, it feels like a pebble where it's like, it's matte, it's smooth, and it's also really, really cool to touch. It's, it's I don't know, it's unique lah, which is really nice. Now, after spending like that five uh, to 10 minutes with the device at the at the activation event, I, I really like the Find N, you know? In fact, it might just be one of my favorite kind of folding smartphone designs, at least, you know, hardware-wise. But it is not a perfect smartphone and it definitely has its flaws. The first of which is that the Oppo Find N doesn't have any kind of IP rating for dust or water resistance. Now, let's be, let's be real here. Samsung definitely set the standard, okay? Their, their Z Flip 3 and Z Fold 3, unbelievable. I can't believe you could throw it in uh, an aquarium full of water and it still survives. And I think that's really important, you know, durability and uh, the ability to survive, um, you know, the elements and the, the ability to use the smartphone and not worry about babying it is, is clearly very important. And a lot of people are asking about it, especially for phones that fold and have a lot of moving parts. So I was kind of disappointed to not see any kind of, you know, this kind of reassurance from, from uh, Oppo. Obviously, they do say that their hinge will last up to 200,000 folds. And and when I asked them about like, will dust get in the hinge and damage, they said, uh, no, it won't. But you know, I, I will remain skeptical until I see some kind of official independent, you know, third party or uh, verification, uh, or, you know, like a long-term user's review before, you know, really, really deciding whether it's, it's actually that durable or not. The other thing is also the software. So um, with this smartphone, Oppo also added a couple of new features to their uh, ColorOS software. Um, particularly uh, when it comes to multitasking. So they are going for like a gesture-based multitasking system. So the, the way it works is if you launch an app, you can use your two fingers, swipe down uh, in the middle of the smartphone, and then it will go into split screen mode. And that's pretty nice to use. It's, it's very intuitive. It feels very iPad-y and in a good way. Uh, and they've also added like, if you're using something in full screen and you want it to be a floating window, just four finger pinch, and it will sort of whoop into like the small floating window which you can move around, which again, I like it. But using it, mm, I did encounter some bugs. Uh, there was one time where I was in the camera app and when I used the cover screen to, to sort of preview it so that I could use the back cameras for selfie, I somehow managed to lock myself completely out of using the inner display and I had to like close it and open multiple times and force it to, to before it would, you know, respond and, and bring me back into the main display. Now, I will grant that these are probably really early units and the software is probably not final. I could have also experienced the bug on that particular device. Um, but, you know, it doesn't feel as polished uh, as I would have liked, especially given how late Oppo was to the party and how beautifully smooth their software looked on the uh, rolling smartphone, the Oppo X 2021. 
But you know, software is something that you can fix over time. So uh, I guess I won't penalize them that much on this. Uh, <laughs> I do really like uh, what they've done with the Oppo Find N. I think that it's, it's maybe the only um, small into big folding phone that I would like to use um, because, you know, the base form factor is basically this, but then you also get a bigger screen. So I really like that. And I'm definitely looking forward to uh, maybe having a chance to review it uh, full time. The unfortunate thing though, is that this smartphone, <laughs> it's not coming to Malaysia. Yeah, I know, I just wasted all your time, right? You watched this whole video and then I'm just telling you, oh, actually, uh, you cannot buy it in Malaysia. Well, don't yell at me, go yell at Oppo, okay? They said that this smartphone will debut in China uh, in the early 2022, but it's not going to come to Malaysia. Uh, though, I will say that even if it does come to Malaysia, I don't know how many of you would actually buy it because if uh, one thing that is also a little bit underwhelming about the Find N is its specs. So, uh, I'm not going to go into depth on the specs because to me, I feel like it's not that important for a phone like this, but you know, these are the specs. The main highlight of which is obviously that it's still being powered by a Snapdragon 888 processor, uh, which is really good in the beginning of 2021, but maybe not so good in the beginning of 2022. But yeah, that's it. I don't have any more information for you as of right now because officially the phone hasn't launched yet and it's all still embargoed. So, um, I guess, We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. If I do get my hands on a review unit, uh, that I will definitely do more content on this. So you will want to subscribe to our YouTube channel to not miss out on that kind of content. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much. Let me know what you think of the Oppo Find N. Is this THE folding phone form factor? Folding phone form factor. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can like us on Facebook. Our home is at searchingchannel.com. And I am Rory. I don't want to say bye. I just want to stare awkwardly at you in the camera until you turn away. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>